keep them up out of the grass. But yeah, fishing at a kind of a slow pace, even though the water's warm. And you'd think you'd kind of want to be burning a crankbait, but uh, when you're fishing around grass, it's just really kind of more feathering it around the top of that coon tail than burn it trying to get a, you'll get a reaction strike when you do hook a little bit of grass and pull it out. But um, if you go too hard and heavy with it, you're gonna get buried down in there. No, they're nice. Bass. Nice chunky one. Let him go, but yeah, that uh, no, it doesn't look much like a bluegill, but in this off color water, that's a really good bluegill imitator. You know, they kind of get a lot of yellow on their sides. Just a really good dirty water crankbait. Cranking grass is a, it's a lot different than, you know, hard bottom cranking. You, with the exception of, you know, wintertime crankbait fishing. If I'm fishing, you know, hard bottom gravel, rock, whatever it may be, I'm usually fishing my crankbait really fast, especially, you know, in the warmer weather months. I'm just kind of trying to slow walk this down. I don't really want to crank it down real hard and get buried in the grass. It's hard to rip clean on coon tail um obviously can be done but i don't want to like overwork the bait down into it so kind of just kind of fishing at a pretty slow pace and then when i do get down it there's one when i do get down to the level of that coon tail i'll kind of slow it down and whoa 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 <laughs> we got a mean one here i'll kind of sweep it and kind of really try to keep that bait at the same level versus just steady cranking it where it's gonna keep diving on me. Kind of fishing almost like a Carolina rig where I'm kind of just pumping it along, little pauses in there and really kind of getting it to hover over that coontail that I think they're sitting on top of. That's the thing with coontail, it's not like milfoil where the fish are gonna get buried into it. They're gonna they're gonna kind of sit around it, sit on top of it. It grows so thick where it clumps up that they can't really live in it like they do milfoil. So you're kind of just fishing around it, so. Crankbait's a really good option for that. This feels like a pretty good fish, yeah. That's kind of what we're fishing there. Water's off color. Um, one with a chartreuse blue crankbait. Oh yeah, that's the best one of the day right there. Good fish. That's the coontail we're fishing right there. You know, it's, it's a fairly short grass. It's not gonna grow to the surface here. Um, like I said, that stuff's growing in about 12 feet, about four foot off the bottom. So that's putting the top of the grass about eight feet. About the perfect depth for that little DT8. But uh, yeah, really good bluegill imitator of the water. We've had an algae bloom here, getting some pretty green water. And um, you know, it's a perfect little bluegill imitator. A lot of these lakes um, up here got stunted bluegills. So, you know, a lot of their forage is really close to that DT8 size. It's really the same size body as a DT6, uh, just a little bit different bill on it. Gets a little bit more vibration and a little deeper. Um, you know, that's really key, you know, matching that depth to where you want to be. If you're throwing a DT6, you probably wouldn't hardly get bit here. And a, a, a DT10, you'd be fighting the grass the whole time. So it's nice to have options and uh, beautiful bass are out here eating bluegills and that thing's the perfect size for them. Like I said, the water's a little green, so that chartreuse blue back's a, a really good bluegill imitator, and we'll throw her back. There he is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mean one. And you can see I was kind of just pumping that crankbait along, almost kind of like a fast Carolina rig. Just pulling it and pausing, reeling up the slack. Really just keeps that bait right at that depth zone I wanted as soon as I start feeling that grass I can kind of when I switch over from steady wind into that to that pump and retrieve I can really maintain steady diving depth head first bill wedged I think he's honestly only got one hooking him he's got that bill wedged in there so good nice chunky bass 
Yeah, we're using the 360 now. I can see the grass line right where that hard bottom meets the grass. And we're spot locked, set up here, dead ahead of the boat. You can see that coon tail on there. And yeah, and another thing I do with the 360, it's the easiest way for me to line up. Just think of it like a clock. We're spot locked. We got a point coming out this way. This leg has no mapping, so um, we're kind of learning on the go, using our electronics to see what's in front of us versus, you know, going off of a Lake Master map. So we're off this point. I can see the coon tail edge, and I'm spot locked downwind of it, staying off of it. We got the edge here. It comes out a little bit of hard bottom off the end of it, but I can see this is the point of the grass right here. So. I'll take my rod and just lay it right over that circle like a dial. That's the outside edge of it right there. Point my rod out so I got a really good lineup on where to throw. And that cast should come right down the edge of the edge of the coontail and be right where the fish are sitting. There's another good one. Makes it really easy to line up on the little sweet spots offshore you know there's nothing visual out here to see with your eyes we're not too far off the bank but just makes it where you're precision casting every time instead of kind of fan casting and hoping you're getting close to it so i'm getting the bait down there and i'll, I'll use my rod a little bit to control my depth a little bit. If I feel like I'm getting too deep into the grass, I'll, I'll pull it up a little bit. But there's one. As soon as I touch that grass, I get bit. Feels pretty good. Feels like he's hooked good. He got me in some weeds, I think. Uh, rod, I, I'm throwing this there. Same rod I throw my chatter bait on, just about every treble hook bait, with the exception of top waters and jerk baits. All my cranking is this 7.4 uh, regular Tatula. It's a heavy action glass rod. So it's pretty powerful. I can fish chatter bait on it with a big hook. And um, I guess my better judgment, I'm gonna go for it. Pretty good fish there. Um, it's a heavy action glass rod, so it, 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 it's it got pretty good backbone. I can fish around grass, but it's still got that slow, really moderate action that you need for, you know, fishing treble hook baits, regardless of the cover you're fishing. You know, once you get them hooked up, you wanna, you want that slow bend to really keep them pinned. 